Hey everybody, welcome back. This is Davis, an educator with over 10 years of experience. And I'm Orion, the founder of Stellar GRE. We're here to bring you your weekly bite-sized episode on GRE prep and grad school admissions. Don't forget, check out our top-rated GRE self-study program at StellarGRE.com. Use the code BITES for 10% off all membership. So let's get to it today. So uh, I'm a student. I've gone through whatever preparatory course that I'm going to use to prepare myself for the GRE and I've done it for two months and I've already scheduled my test and I'm lined up but I don't I don't feel ready uh what do I do with that feeling another way to phrase it is is there ever a point at which uh your students you've noticed feel ready even if they're signed up for a two-month course and they're a month in and they're like all right I'm ready to go I mean what is the do your students feel ready to take the test? Is feeling ready an accurate or not feeling ready an accurate measure of when to jump in and take the test or not? Yeah, I would say that in my experience, the vast majority of people do not feel ready to take this test. It might even be fair to say that no one truly feels ready to take the test. There will always be harder questions that you haven't encountered. There is always more prep that you can do. Uh, There is always another example of carelessness that might need to be mitigated. It's very difficult, especially for folks with perfectionistic tendencies, to feel adequately prepared for this test, mostly because they're focusing on hopefully the diminishing part that they're still not doing perfectly. So I've sometimes worked with folks, I I hope this isn't the case for you listeners, but sometimes work with folks who have prepared for the test for years, wow. plural, like more than one year. I worked with a, with a woman who had taken the test 12 times before she reached out to me for tutoring, 12 times. It, it was heartbreaking. And she just wasn't getting the score she wanted? She was a, applying for a program that had a very hard threshold. Mm-hmm. She needed to score above a certain number, and she was one or two points shy. Oh, my multiple times and we worked together for a couple of months she took the test for the 13th time lucky 13 she got what she needed she was ecstatic Um, it it was a really good feeling to work with that woman Um, but in, in that case she kept on with the prep because she wasn't quite yet getting what she needed uh the more common situation with folks is they procrastinate scheduling the test because they're still getting questions wrong. One thing I'd like to suggest is that that could very well be a business model for certain GRE test prep companies. Most GRE test prep programs operate on, uh, including my own, operate on like a a time-based membership, monthly or semi-annually or annually. And if you're answering all the questions correctly, you're going to feel like you don't need their program anymore. And so what I've, dis- what I've seen in my own personal evaluation of some of these programs is some programs inappropriately populate their practice tests like completely with devilishly hard problems. And even if you were to provoke the hardest second quant or verbal section, you will never provoke a section that is entirely composed of very difficult problems. Mm -hmm. The fact that that sometimes occurs in test prep situations, I think is in service of keeping students feeling slightly off balance and insecure so that they continue to use their programs longer, to be honest. And is Stellar GRE different in that respect? Do you give, you, as far as I remember from going through the course myself, you only give uh, realistic realistically generated test questions in your sections. Is that right? Yeah, I I think that Stellar GRE's program actually is different because unlike most of the other programs out there, which let's say have a, a, uh, a question bank of hundreds or thousands of questions and then their, quote, mock tests are randomly populated with questions of a certain difficulty, you can get into that situation. On... In, in Stellar's product, the mock tests are, while they're adaptive, they are static. So they are 
each section of every single test is balanced to have the correct proportion of easy, medium, and hard problems. Mm -hmm. So you will never encounter a section of the test that is entirely composed of devilishly hard problems or also entirely composed of insultingly easy problems too. Mm -hmm. So it's actually, in my opinion, more closely approximating what you will encounter on test day. But the fact of the matter is, is that most people will not feel ready and that's okay. Your feelings may not be an accurate guide to what you should do in this case. So if you're not feeling ready for the test, uh, even taking one of your uh, practice tests, which is dynamic, I mean, what is a good metric? I mean, yes, there's going to be the mental, emotional. Yes, as you said, if you're focusing on those areas, if you're continually focusing in your preparation on those areas where you're still making careless errors or, or still, I mean, vocab is its whole own beast we'll tackle in another episode. Um, there's always more to learn there and be more prepared there. But if the feeling of being ready or not is not a good metric by which to uh, measure or schedule when you're going to take the test, what are, what is a defined metric that you use in Stellar GRE? Sure. I think the best indication that a student is ready to sit for the exam is that he or she is performing at or around their target score consistently on more than one mock exam. Your target score, again, is the median score for successful applicants at your program of choice. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in the Stellar GRE program, students receive a scaled score that mimics the scoring algorithm of the actual exam, so they should get realistic feedback as to their current level of performance. And I'm saying at or around because there is something called the standard error of the measure, which basically uh, accounts for mm, unavoidable variability in minute differences in different versions of the test. And basically what this means is that scores that are within that band should be treated as functionally equivalent, mm -hmm. which on the quant section is basically one point, mm -hmm. and with the verbal section is like a point and a half, which is, they don't give half points, so it's like one or two points. Mm -hmm. Programs are actually not supposed to treat, say, a 165 and a 164 any differently, because the standard error of a measure says there's not enough significant difference between those two scores. Do you see? Mm -hmm. That's why I say at or around. So if you're scoring at or around your target score, you should be ready to move forward with the test. Um, you will never feel ready. That's okay. Courage is not the absence of fear. Courage is acting in the presence of fear. And that's kind of what students need to do. My program is a little bit like a boot camp. We train our soldiers really hard and then drop them into the war zone. And the idea here is if they can rely on their training, if they can fall back instinctively, on what they were trained to do, they might get out of there alive. And with the score they want. Yeah, even better. All right. Well, a lot of good stuff here. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. We'll be back next week for another bite-sized episode of GRE Bytes. Uh, if you heard anything that you want to know more about or if you have another topic you'd like to discuss on a future episode, please reach out. Email us at stellargre at gmail.com. And if you're ready to take your prep to the next level, check out our top-rated GRE self-study program at StellarGRE.com. Don't forget, you can use the code BITES for 10% off all memberships. See you guys again soon. Bye-bye.